Hello, and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints. Thank you for being with us on our Bible study this February the 23rd, 2022, the last Wednesday in the month of February. We thank God for how uh, you've been with us. Uh, the previous weeks as we've been in the study out of the book of Matthew chapter 24 and I pray that the Word of God has been enlightening to you through the teaching of God's Word out of Matthew 24 we pray that tonight that the Lord will give us understanding and enlightenment as we study further in Matthew 24 so uh, I encourage you go ahead have your Bibles ready get your Bibles in hand and uh, notepad pen pencil whatever you write with and Let's uh, take good notes and ask the Lord to give us a heart and a mindset to be receptive to the Word of God that He's He's sharing with us on this on this Bible study day, Bible study night. Again, we thank God for you being there. I want to say I thank God for how the Lord is blessing our morning worship on Sundays. He's blessing our church with great attendance, and we give glory to God for that. A uh, great atmosphere of worship and praise where God is gathering the saints together and we might praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I thank God for that type of mindset amongst the saints. So I want to encourage the saints, all who God gives a comfort, to be here Sunday. This is the last Sunday in February, fourth Sunday in February to come. Let's worship the Lord and praise Him and glorify and hear what He will give us from His Holy Word. All the protocols are in place. Again, we want to thank God for the previous weeks and all that he's done. But we want to encourage come out and be a part of our worship on Sundays. Sundays at 11 o'clock promptly. We start at 11 o'clock promptly. But again, I want to thank you for being with us on our Bible study out of the Gospel of Matthew. Gospel of Matthew. We're going to pick up at verse 32 uh, in Matthew 24. Verse 32 of Matthew chapter 24. And let's see what God will give us from the Holy Word on, on this, this day. We have been studying and discussing the events that are pointing to the end times. And as you're aware, we refer to that teaching and that doctrine as uh, eschatology. Eschatology. And again, the last, the days of the end times and the study and discussion of all this taking place that's pointing us to the second advent or the second coming of Jesus Christ and as we look further in Matthew 24 God is going to give us further evidence from his word that points us to the coming Christ Christ's second advent his return and all again the events that are taking place this day pointing towards that do not not take it serious all that we see that's taking place in this world today, take it serious. Ask the Lord to give you a mindset and a heart of seriousness because as we close out, if the Lord allows us to make it over to verse 42, we'll see the urgency and the seriousness of behind we who are the elect of God, the chosen of God, the people of God, how we must be on guard and watch and be conscientious of what's taking place. And I refer to the elect of God. That's what we closed out on last week in verse 31. When it says, and he shall send his angels, his messengers. With a great sound of a trumpet. That's the gospel we covered on last week. And they shall gather together his elect. The chosen of God from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. The God's, God's people. His, the believers of Jesus Christ. The elect of God. The chosen of God. The redeemed of God will be gathered through the Word of God. And that's the importance, beloved, of us studying the Word of God. So we know when, when that message goes out of that gathering, we will take heed of the sound. So thank you for studying the Word of God with me. Thank you for having your Bibles as we go into the Word of God. This is Bible study. I can't reiterate that enough. Bible study, not book study. Bible study, we study the Bible. And what God gives us from his holy word. So the elect of God, the chosen of God, the gathering of God's people. And so now in verse 32, 
It says, now learn. Talking to God's people. Remember that Jesus Christ is teaching his disciples. He's teaching his pupils. He's teaching his students. He says, now learn. That word learn means to understand. To understand. To increase in knowledge. And that's why we should have an appetite. To increase in knowledge. To understand. When we pray, one of the things we ought to pray for is understanding. That the Lord will teach us, instruct us, increase our knowledge. So when we know better, we do better. And we know we would know how to approach things. So he says, now learn. A parable, an example. He's giving an example here. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, Jesus says. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer, summer is not. And then he gives the, ex the explanation in verse 33. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. He says in verse 32 again about the fig tree. What well, we ought to learn and increase in awareness and understand. The fig tree represents abundance. Abundance in the land. And the fig tree is also symbolic of Israel. Well, what he's talking about here in, in verse 32 and 33 about the fig tree it's making reference to the reliable growth of the fig tree, how the fig tree cycles is related to the seasons. How when it blossoms, when his branch is yet tender, buds and put it forth leaves, the budding of the leaves off the fig tree. Ye know that summer is nice. Summer is approaching. So it's setting the stage for us to understand what we look for when Christ, his second advent, his return, is approaching. The fig tree gives us an example. Yearly, it's a cycle. When springtime comes forth, you can count on the budding of the leaves of the fig tree. You can count it. And that is representing summer is near. So likewise, it says in verse 33, Likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the door see all what things well we've already discussed when we shall see the abomination of desolation when there will be great suffering unlike we can can even imagine the uh, uh the, when when destruction will come when there will be idolatry worship i mean blatant idolatry worship in 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 the so-called places of worship where God is put aside and idols are pumped up and pressed up. So these are signs. The abomination of desolation we cover that. And the great tribulation destruction, calamity all this like I said we can't fathom now what's taking place. We see the things that are taking place how terrible they are. They will be, it will be no comparison with the great tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation. It will be no comparison when the great tribulation comes. How much suffering and how much destruction will take place. These are the things that it's talking about in verse 33. And the signs in heaven that we covered last week when it says immediately in verse 29. After the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. When all these signs are, are shown and, and, and these things are seen. That's what it's talking about here in verse 30, uh, 33. That Jesus, his return is near. The way the, we see these signs approaching and happening, the way the fig tree is so on cycle every year that points to the coming of summer, these things that we see taking place, place the calamities, the destruction, the idol worship, the foolishness, the mockery of Christ, all these things are pointing that Christ's return is imminent. When a fig tree 
But it is inevitable that the result of summer is here. And so in the same way, when we see these signs, it's showing the inevitability that Christ's return is near. Saints of God, we should always be, again, on alert. That goes over to verse 42 when we close out tonight. We should always be alert. And what that does is keeps us grounded so we won't be so far removed from the ways of Christ and the things of Christ and the teachings of Christ that we're continually learning and our knowledge and awareness is being increased. That comes from the study of God's word as God gives us the mindset to study his word. In verse 34, he says, Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now the generation that he's talking about here in verse 34 is are those who will physically be alive when the great tribulation takes place. Again, I told you, we're not in the great tribulation right now. There's a lot of calamity going on. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of, uh, of things that are taking place that are showing us that it's headed that way. But there's a generation who will live during the time of this great calamity and the very nearness of Christ's return. And the Bible says here in verse 34, Truly, verily, I say unto you, that generation that's alive at that time shall not pass. They shall not pass away till all these things that we just covered be fulfilled. They will live and witness it all. I'm talking about God's people, his elect. Now, they will be protected because Christ, he is their king. He is their Lord. He is their savior. He is their protector. If God allows us for to, to live during the great tribulation, he will protect us. We belong to him. That's why it is a blessing to be looked upon in God from God as the elect chosen of God. We're protected. We're covered. That's why we worship God. That's why we praise God. That's why we glorify God, knowing he has us covered. We cannot protect ourselves. We cannot cover ourselves. We cannot keep ourselves. He is our keeper. He is our sustainer. And so if we are physically alive when all this takes place, we're, taking, we, we're covered. That's why over in the previous verses when it said in verse 6, don't turn there, but refer back says that you be not troubled. We're we not disturbed because his word is teaching us that these things are going to, going to come to pass, that they're happening. And if we live, then we shall, we shall see. And we... Did we by being a part of that generation, we won't die until all these things are fulfilled. Look at verse 35. The word of God says, heaven and earth shall pass away. <laughs> but my words shall not pass away. Again, the importance of Bible study. The importance of learning. Getting a deeper understanding. Because those who are caught up in the heavens of this time, in the world of this time, these things will pass away. They will disappear. Heaven and earth will disappear. But notice what God says. My words shall not pass away. The word of God, what's in, in his word, the truth of God's word. Oh, man, I preached not too long, a couple of weeks ago. It says, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. The truth of God's word will never pass. The truth of God's word stands. It's the truth of God's word that sets the elect free. And those whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Because of God's word, which will never pass away. But all this stuff, all the destruction that is this coming, all the calamity, all the suffering, all that's coming in this world, in this in the heavens, all that's gonna be it's going to disappear. Go away. But for those of us, again, who are rooted and grounded in the word of God, we have a sure foundation through Jesus Christ, through the word of God. The word of God, the words of God shall not pass away. Not one jot. It says over in the beginning of the books of Matthew, not one jot, not one tittle, tittle, not the smallest 
uh, a punctuation or nothing from the word of God will pass away. God's word is accurate. All 66 books from the book, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. All the word of God, words of God throughout the word of God will stand. But this other stuff is going to pass away. So don't put your hope. I cannot put my hope in the things of this world. And again, the word of God says, all you have are the things of this world. You're most miserable. And people are miserable because they're putting their hope in this world. And this world is, is showing the destruction. It's, it's going to pass away. It's going to disappear. Look at verse 36. The word of God says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Jesus refers back to the question when they asked, what will be the sign of your coming? I told you, they wanted a sign, wanted a sign. Jesus said he is one with God. He is divine with God, but he's teaching because he's here physically with the disciples who are sitting with him outside of the temple. Remember, they were so enamored with the temple and the beauty of the temple. So Jesus is teaching that this temple will be destroyed. And so now he's teaching and letting them know they wanted a sign. Jesus teaching that in verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Jesus being one with the father, but he's here physically on the earth. He's teaching these folk who are trying to give these prophetic thoughts of when the end time will be, they're false. If Jesus presents, and he's right here with them saying the only one who has the authority to declare when the end will be is God the Father. He's showing us as mere humans, as human beings. No man has that authority or ability to, to define when the last day is going to be. No man. Only God the Father who art in heaven has that authority. That's why God is sovereign. When we say sovereign, he is in absolute, complete control. And for so many times, so many people put their hopes in these false prophets who are not real. They lead people astray from the truth. And you have, you've had all throughout the ages where there have been those who prophesied. That the end time will be on this day. The end time will be on this day. The end time will be on this day. And these days come and go. Come and go. So they amend it and have to change it and go somewhere else. Only God knows. So our assurance and our hope rest in God. The God of the Bible. The truth of God's word. That's what we put our hope and our, 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 our trust in. No man knoweth, not the angels in heaven who are around the throne saying, worthy, worthy, worthy. They're right there in the presence of God Almighty, but they don't know. And then it goes on and says, only, but my father, only. Look at verse 37. But as the days of Noah were so, were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. Verse 38 says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Look at verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. I told you, have your notepads in hand, your pen in hand. Write these down. I want you to go. In your, in your independent reading, I'm going to read it. I'm going to go there now. But write these, these passages of Scripture down. And, well, matter of fact, Genesis chapter 6. Read Genesis chapter 6 in its entirety. But I'm going to Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to look at verses 5 through 8. And then verses 11 through 13. And then verse 17 out of Genesis chapter 6. But for your independent homework, read the entire count of Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, reads, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, the same as is today, and of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, meaning ongoing. Look at verse 6 of Genesis chapter 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, a lot of 
preachers would say, God changed his mind. No, God didn't change his mind. God had already had in his mind that there was going to be destruction coming in Noah's day. Now, he's, you've heard me teach this before. He, he, this is a term when it says in, in verse 6, and they repented the Lord, and then in the latter part, it grieved the Lord. This is an anthropomorphic statement, which is giving God human quality so we can understand. It saddened God. It grieved God. To see what was taking place. He's God. He created man in his own image. And he sees what's taking place. In the foolishness. And the madness. And the violence that's taking place. But notice what he says in verse 7. And the Lord said. I will destroy man. Whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast. And the creeping thing. And the fowls of the air. For it repented me. That I have made them. It, he says again. He's grieving here. And again, the term anthropomorphic, giving a, a human characteristic to God, saddened him. So, so we can, we ought to be saddened and grieve, grieving about what's taking place and what's coming for those who are not the elect of God. Because other destruction is coming. You can't stop it. It's going to happen. And this is what God is saying. And so for us who are the elect of God, we ought to show up, be praying, watching, and trusting God. And praying that for those who are not in the, that it hasn't been manifested, their knowledge of who God is, that God will save them and deliver them from this ungodly world. Look over at verse 11 through 13. Again, write these down. Genesis chapter 6. The earth, the Bible says in Genesis 6 and 11, was what the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. This is in Noah's day. But correlate that to today's day. Violence. Look at verse 12. And God looked upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt. <clears throat> For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Why? For the earth is filled with violence through them. And and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That's what's coming, y'all. It happened in Noah's day. And over in verse 17 of Genesis chapter 6, it says, And behold, God says, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. And when you read on the down that Noah and his sons and their wives and his wife, they were the only ones. And two creep, creeping creatures, creatures two by two, that came upon the ark. And God shut the door of the ark. They were the only ones to survive this flood that God sent. 40 days and 40 nights. The deluge of rain just raining down. And that's symbolic of what's coming. The judgment. So when we go back over to Matthew chapter 24. So when it says about that day and that hour, for verse 38 again to 39 and uh, 39, for as in the days of there were before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You hear, you hear now in this corrupt, violent world that we live in. That God has his judgment is showing in this world. You hear this statement all the time. We want to get back to some sense of normalcy. <laughs> well, you know what? What humans think is a sense of normalcy is being corrupt and violent towards one another. You want to get back to how it was. And, and that's you no know, marrying and, and doing all kind of things. That were against what God had ordered for man to do. You know, his, his coming is going to be indicative of those who are pleasure seekers. Pleasure oriented. This is what, when we say we want to get back to normal. People want to seek pleasure within themselves. And they want to have a self-gratifying life where they can look and say, my life is gratifying. But God is showing us the corrupt and the violence that he, 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 he's grieving, he's sad, he saddens over in a sense that we can understand. And as Christians, we ought to be grieving and sad that normalcy is not this world. 
No. And you want to get back to normal, it, it won't happen. For those who self-gratifying, that's what they want. P flesh pleasing. What pleases the flesh, it's got to be destroyed. It will be destroyed in that day and that hour. So he says here, and, and look at verse 39, and knew not until the flood came. When the flood came, it was too late. And took them all away, those who were not on the ark. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just as those who were not in the ark were destroyed, the same will take place with those who are not in the ark of Christ will be destroyed. That's just the truth of God's word. His second advent, his second coming, those who are not in Christ Jesus, those who are self-gratifying, those who are self-pleasing, souls who are, are focused on their flesh, they will be destroyed. Same way it took place in Noah's day. And notice verses 40, 41 and 42. Verse 40 says, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Verse 41, Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. The reference of two being in the field, or at work, at the time of Christ's return, implies the suddenness, catch this, the suddenness of his coming and how he will separate the lost and the saved. Let's say that again. When you see in verses 40 and 41, two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left, two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. It shows there are going to be those who are not expecting his return, not looking towards his return. They're getting thinking about it because they're self-gratifying. They're self-pleasing. They're about the flesh. And one, the one who will be taken is the one who knows Christ is coming back. He's learned. He's learned from the parable of the fig tree. He's learned from the teachings of God's word. They have learned that Christ is coming back. So when he comes back, they will be taken to be with the Lord. But the other one who are left behind, they will be destroyed. No hope for them. That's the doctrine of election. That's, and there are those who don't like that, but I'm telling you, one will be taken. Read the scripture. One left behind. One saved, one lost. One sheep, one goat. That's the Bible. And for those of us who are the elect of God, we ought to be grateful and thankful. And watch. Last verse. Look what verse 42 says. Watch therefore. For ye know not the hour your Lord doth, doth come. Watch. The word watch means to be on guard. Be wise and discerning. Ask the Lord. Lord, I'm praying for your guidance. That's what the elect does. Discernment is praying for God's guidance. Lord, give me a discerning spirit to watch. Lord, give me the spirit to be on guard, to be astute to what's taking place, to not get consumed in self-gratifying, self-pleasing, the things of the flesh. Keep me focused on learning more about the word of God. Over in the book of Luke, it says it's this way. It's giving the same account. In Luke chapter uh, 21, write this one down. Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36. The word of God says in Luke 21 verses 34 through 36, it says, and take heed, that's that watch, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that the day come upon you unawares. The word surfeiting means to indulge in one's appetite, self-gratifying, self-pleasing. And to be overcharged, it says here, when it's talking about overcharged, you just weigh down. That's your focal point to gratify yourself. And notice what it says, the cares of this life. So that the day, so that that day come upon you unaware, because it's coming. And there are those who are not watching and praying. Look at verse 35 of Luke chapter 21. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole of of, of the of the whole earth and then he goes back to say as we were closing out in verse 42 back over in Matthew 24 watch ye therefore and pray always <laughs> that's for a discerning spirit that God we will guard that God will give us the understanding 
the, 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 the learn increasingly. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy, thank you Lord, to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand mm, before the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. That we will be counted worthy. And the only ones who will be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. The only ones who will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant are those who are the chosen, elect, redeemed, saved of God. That's, I'm saved, beloved. I'm not saying that arrogantly. I say that humbly. And I say that thankfully. If you are the elect of God, if you're the chosen of God, be grateful. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be humble. Pray and watch continually. Be on guard. That's what God has called us to do. As the elect of God. Because these things, God is showing us the signs coming to pass. And there's a day coming, unlike we've ever seen before, where there will be other destruction. That's when Christ shall return. But for those of us who are the elect of God, the saved of God, we have hope of eternal glory because of Jesus Christ. I pray that the lesson is clear, has been made clear. If you have any questions, any concerns, Please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the church. Leave us a message if we don't answer the telephone. 423-266-0083. Saints of God, elect of God, body of Christ here, greater friendship. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday at the 11 o'clock hour to worship the Lord. For, he's, he's in, for he indeed is worthy of the praise. Let us pray. Father, thank you the instructions and the teachings of your word I pray that you have used your vessel to clearly and rightly divide the word of truth Lord and I pray that as the elect of God the chosen of God the body of Christ those of who are the ecclesia that you are giving us a heart to learn to learn to increase in knowledge as we study the word of God Lord as you, you taught us a few weeks ago we should read to understand read for understanding and Lord, that is our prayer, that you will give us understanding from the word of God. And that we will watch, we will be on guard, knowing that at any moment, when God says so, that will be the day. But as you preached us and taught us on this past Sunday, make us to be aware that this day is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is our prayer that we pray in the name of Jesus and for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.